Hello friends, grace and peace on this Sunday. We're going to let the musician continue a little while longer, so we encourage you to listen and enjoy. Friends, grace and peace on this Palm Sunday. Thank you for worshiping with us. Those who are here in present, those who are here online, and those who are watching later on Facebook and on YouTube, it is a pleasure to join you for this Palm Sunday. Just a few short announcements. We will not be having our normally scheduled Bible studies this next week since it is Holy Week, and I don't want to totally overwhelm myself, and I also want to make the services good for all of you. So. We will be having our service on Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. We will be having our service on Good Friday at 7 p.m. And then we will be having our service Easter morning at 9 p.m. Since we can have as many people online as we like. With that, I will say we will sing hymn number 344, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians, verses, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one more. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, 
And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God is also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Our gospel reading comes from Mark. This is the Palm Sunday version that we find in Mark. So this is chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. When they, and this is Jesus and his disciples, were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he, Jesus, sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the name, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The gospel of our Lord. Friends, grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this Palm Sunday. It is truly a blessing to be here with all of you today, those present, those who are worshiping live remotely, and then those who will be watching this live later. This is an exciting text, because as I was explaining to, to folks earlier, everything that happens in the Bible, all the weird stuff, is usually some, has some kind of relationship with something else in the Bible. So if you go back, you can actually trace almost everything that happens in here back to another passage. So I want to spend a moment doing that, because it, it answers a, an important question. What kind of king is Christ coming to be? So this first reading is from, wait, that's not the first one. The first reading is from 2 Kings. So this is 2 Kings 9, 11, and some background. So kingdom of Israel is existing, and they have a king that is over them, King Ahab, who is considered very wicked, who is not following the ways of God, who is worshiping other gods, who is slaughtering prophets, and so, God anoints through Elisha this man named Jehu. So, Jehu becomes coronated king in secret, much like King David was. And this is where the text starts. When Jehu came back to his master's, office, to his master's officers, they said to him, Is everything all right? What did that madman come to s Why did that madman come to you? This is referring to the prophet, the, prophets, the person that the prophet sent. He, Jehu, answered them, you know the sort that, and how they babble. They said, liar, come on, tell us. So Jehu said, this is what he said to me. Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king of Israel. Then hurriedly they all took their cloaks and spread them for him on the bare steps. And they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. And this is the passage where we get the cloak spreading. Then next we have a reading. This is from Zechariah 9.9. 9. And this is a, a proclamation about the kind of king that is coming to Israel. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. This is, yeah, 9-9. Nine, nine. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Yo, lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey. On a colt, the foal of a donkey. So, this is where, this is why Jesus is riding on a colt. This is also a fun side note why in the book of Matthew, Jesus is riding a donkey and a colt. If you read it closely, you'll find that he is somehow writing both of those at the same time. That's another fun Bible study for another time. However, in Mark, he is just writing a cult in reference to this passage from Zechariah. And then finally, many of you have been asking for me to talk about King Solomon some more, so I will, I will finally bring him up. This is 1 Kings 38 through 40. So the priest Zadok, the prophet Nathan, Benai, son of Jehoiada, and the Chethrites and the Pelethites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and led him to Gihon. 
There the priest Zadok took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. Then they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon! And all the people went up, following him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth quaked at their noise. And then finally, the last passage that I wanted to reference, but that's not, not in that Bible, is in the Apocrypha, which is this collection of books that didn't quite make it into the Old Testament and the, the New Testament. This is a book called First Maccabees. I'm trying to, I don't remember exactly what it is, but in this passage from Maccabees, they talk about waving palms as a sign of victory. All this is to say, to try and provide some context for us as to what is happening on Palm Sunday. This is not, wow, Jesus is wonderful. This is not, wow, I really like this guy. This is anointing Jesus. This is consecrating Jesus as a king. This is putting Jesus in the place of King Solomon, of the place of King Jehu, and in the place of this, this prophet, this king that Zechariah is talking about. So to see all of these things would kind of be like if Jesus was to come and we started playing Hail to the Chief. And I don't know what we would wave in our, our modern time. All of this done, all of this is done to show that Christ is king. And I think the natural question is, what kind of king is Christ going to be? Is he going to be ruthless? Is he going to be merciful? Is he going to be authoritative? And we actually get a pretty good answer in Luke 22. I forgot to bookmark this one, but if you stick with me a second, I'll, I'll pull it up. This is Luke, oh, Luke 7, 22. This is when John sent some of his disciples to ask, so who is this Jesus guy? Is this guy worth following or not? So, here it is. All right, I'll start from verse 20. When the men came to him, these are the messengers from John the Baptist, they asked, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus had just cured many people of disease, plagues, and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind. And he, Jesus, Answer them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is no one, anyone who takes no offense at me. So here we have our answer. What kind of king do we have in Christ? We have a, a king who raises the dead, who lifts up the poor, who gives the blind their sight, who cleanses the lepers, who brings the lame to walk. We have a Christ who looks out for the least of us. That is the king that we have. And so when people are saying Hosanna, that literally translates to save us. What they are saying is bring us out of this kingdom of Rome and bring us into a kingdom that worships God. Now I feel like I've beaten a dead horse on this point. I've spoken about it back in January and I've spoken about it during Lent. Christ is not the king that people expect him to be. People are expecting Jesus to be a warlord. He is not a warlord. However, what we get in return, instead of this warlord Christ, is something much better. We get a Christ who cares for us, a ruler who is compassionate, a ruler who is loving, a ruler who lifts up the least of us. And I think if there is any comparison to be made between the kingship of Christ and our modern rulers, it is this. When the poor are lifted up, when the least are lifted up, when we find ourselves in agreement with our neighbors, at peace with our enemies, when we find ourselves lifting everyone up, that is when we are in alignment with Christ. Now, as a preacher, I feel like I, I do two things. One, I point to Christ, and then I, I point to us and ponder about the ways we can become more like Christ. And I, this is not something that, that I do lightly because I think it's a, a serious deal, but I think there must be a comparison made between the behavior of Christ, the King, and the behavior of our current administration. And that's not something I do lightly because I don't think bringing politics into church is the most helpful. I think it can be incredibly divisive and separate us when Christ calls us to unify. 
But at the same time, on this Palm Sunday, where we have a Christ King, where we have a form of kingship, a form of governance that is shown to us, that we know is following Christ, I think we have a duty as Christians to ask our leaders to do the same. Some of you probably heard the stories about masks being stopped at the border, about Donald Trump chiding 3M, a Minnesota company, for their lack of production of masks here, and encouraging them not to send masks to Canada or to Malaysia or to anywhere else besides the United States. And I think that behavior is incredibly unchristlike. I don't say that lightly. I don't mean to turn this into some kind of political theater. I don't particularly care who you vote for or what party you affiliate with. But if we proclaim Christ is king, then we have to use, we should use that model in our form of governance now. And that means we have a duty to care for all people. Not just the people within our borders, not that just the people who look like us, but we have a duty to care for all people. These last few weeks, I have been preaching about the need for solidarity, the need for love for each other, the need for unity, and I see some of Trump's actions in direct negative action to that. And like I said, I'm not telling you how to vote, but I think part of my duty as a preacher is to call out the people in power when they are doing things that are sinful. And I think those actions, refusing to give masks to people who need them, stopping shipments at the border, that behavior is sinful. That is not the kind of kingship that Christ would want. I try very hard not to speak about politics, and so I apologize if I offended any of you. That is not my intent. Know that when I am speaking, I am just trying to be faithful to Christ. Christ criticized the governing authorities of his time frequently. We have lots of evidence of that in the Gospels. And I think it is entirely fair for us to do the same. So, please join me in prayer. God, we give you thanks for Christ. We give you thanks for his example of kingship, one that lifts up the lowly, one that spreads peace, one that shares resources with those who are in need. We pray that we would follow that example. We know that all of us fall short. And we also know that we have a Christian duty to proclaim your kingdom, God. That we have a duty to proclaim your kingdom and to let each other know when we are falling short. God, we pray for this administration that they would open their hearts that they would see the need across our borders, that they would lift up the lowly here and internationally. Help them to do your will in this world. Amen.
Please join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that causes us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek liberation of the oppressed. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison and those who face execution. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded. Comfort the dying. Bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray for all who prepare and lead worship in this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live to you, and to give ourselves for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Lord, in your mercy. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear the good news. God loves us though we are mired in sin. God loves us though we fight. God loves us though we turn against our neighbor. God is with us this day and always. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you, God.